We're here with Andrew Meyer from Vermont Soy and Vermont Natural Coatings in Hardwick, Vermont. What's up, Andrew? Great to see you. Likewise, man. Can you believe it was 19 days ago we met for the first time? You have been on a you've been on a trip. It's yeah, great. Man. And yeah. thanks for coming to Hardwick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Hardwick, for showing me all the wonderful things that happened. Yeah. Uh, as we discussed, I'm asking a few questions. Answer them any way or not answer them in any way that you like. Great. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. How old are you? 38. Okay. And political orientation? Independent. Religion or religious affiliation? None. Okay. Job titles here in Hartwick? Uh, job titles, um, well, a co-owner of Vermont Soy, owner of Vermont Natural Coatings, um, a relief milker, um, probably a few other uh, titles that uh, I'm, I'm given that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you, you started with Vermont Soy and Vermont Natural Coatings grew from that, correct? Uh, well, we st I started, um, Vermont Soy was actually founded by a friend of mine uh, who made tempeh years ago. Um, and um, I was working in Washington, D.C. at the time um, and trying to figure out how to get back to Vermont, move back to Vermont. I grew up in Hardwick and uh, my goal was to be back in uh, here living in Hardwick and having a business that was related to agriculture. And, ideally be back on the farm. Um, grew up, so I grew up on a dairy farm and being in um, Washington DC um, trying to figure out how to get back to Vermont um, and having been involved with agriculture policy uh, while in DC recognized that I wanted to do something that um, would help diversify Vermont agriculture and that's what got my interest in Vermont soy. Um, and at the same time um, Vermont natural coatings which was invented by the University of Vermont, uses whey protein as a, uh, which is a byproduct of cheese, as a co-binder in environmentally safe wood finish. So, to me, it was a great. Those two ideas were uh, worth pursuing and creating two businesses out of them. Um, one, soy diversifying agriculture, healthy food, and Vermont Natural Coatings using a byproduct of agriculture to produce uh, an environmentally safe indoor um, air product. Um, uh, product so, and both uh, both I could do in hardware, or at least that was the the dream, and that's the mission, and that's what we're trying to accomplish now. I say you're accomplishing it with you. We're getting there. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Talk about how you view your role in this community. Um, I'm uh, I'm, I'm uh, I feel part of the community. I think that's that's the biggest. That's my. Um, biggest part is just being part of it, being in every part of the community um, and that, you know, communicating with everybody at all levels uh, uh, to uh, work toward uh, the, having them recognize the importance of, of agriculture. And luckily in Hardwick there's such a strong connection to ag farming. Uh, most people's uh, relatives have worked on a farm, lived on a farm, grandparents uh, grew up on a farm. There's still a strong understanding of uh, the the work ethic and the and the importance of agriculture. So, um, what I feel is is trying to um, show that by what we do and how in all in all aspects of from the dairy farm to the businesses, um, how we um, um, incorporate um, not only farming as providing a raw product, but the uh, the significance and importance of agriculture in in the whole community. People around the country would have a good time with this one. If the local independent community here in Hardwick were an animal, what animal would it be and why? It'd be a frog. Yeah. Why? Frog, we're just hopping. We're slowly hopping and we're under the radar, but we're doing where we know where we need to be. What frog hit? What frog do you know that hasn't gotten where he wants to go? Right? So slow, we're making it, we're hopping, it's slow hop at a time. Um, but um, we're going to be where we want to be, and, and, and who wouldn't want to just hang out in a, in a pond, right? Did you prep for that question? That was an awfully quick answer. No, who, who wouldn't, who wouldn't, wouldn't want to be a fraud? <laughs> I love it. Right? Absolutely. Okay, can you talk about a time when you as a business or an individual needed support and the local independent community was there for you? Yeah, I think um, just having just having the opportunity, I think, is that support. Um, 
you know, we, the small businesses involved in Hardwick have, you know, we're risk takers, we're trying to move things forward, but um, the reason why we want to be here is because of the, the, what's, what's already here and how we want to enhance that and grow that. So I think that's what the, the community has prov provided probably most, um, mostly is just being here, having this opportunity to walk in, having grown up here, and be able to take it to the, you know, be part of it and grow it. Speaking of, of returning to roots and, and returning to community, can you talk about briefly that uh, wonderful project uh, that you've got where you've owned, you own some land in downtown Harbor with an old building? Yeah, the um, Center for an Agricultural Economy, um, which is a nonprofit that was founded about in 2004, um, is really trying to engage uh, the community um, and create the awareness of the importance of um, a healthy food system and also uh, an economy that's supported and based on food and agriculture. So, um, you know, the simplest thing we did in the beginning was to uh, enhance the community garden, um, bring awareness of food and get the local um, people, uh, giving them opportunity to grow their food. And from that, it's grown into, that, into uh, purchasing 15 acres in the middle of the village uh, that we're going to uh, create an agricultural education center uh, where we'll have um, uh, trials uh, uh, for crops, we'll have uh, uh, gardens, um, hopefully a year-round farmer's market. Um, it's also the site of the community um, festivals. Uh, the local Kiwanis holds their festival there. Uh, this year was the biggest um, festival that we've had probably ever, and it was based on food and agriculture. The biggest parade. Um, and that, that fair was supported by, by agriculture. So that's a really great sign, and that just shows, I think, that the support and interest that the local community has, has um, with this movement that's, that's going on here. So that, that um, piece of property is going to be a, a great, um, uh, great project for not only um, you know, those who are really moving in the direction of, a, of a, an economy based on food and agriculture, but the entire community has a connection to this place. It was the uh, uh, Hardwick at one point was the um, uh, the capital, the granite capital of the world, and providing and supplying um, you know the United States with the highest quality granite. And the work ethic that went on with um, harvesting stone from a mountain and carving that into premium value-added um, stone is very much like what we're doing here of cultivating um, a piece of land growing something and then adding value to that to create a premium product that's serving the same market um, but the same connection to the land um, even in a different way. It's so funny, you know, uh, especially in the city, I think there's a, in cities, you know, there's a perception of, of a farmer or someone yeah. in agriculture, you know, and, and, and to hear you talk about, you know, the creation of value-added products, I mean, it just breaks down all those perceptions so much, at least for me. Not yeah. that I had them, yeah. but I'm familiar with them, you know, and I hope whoever sees this, you know, connects that as well.